Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket for Tuesday, the 5th of January. May the 5th be with you. Today on the show, PSN is down, efficiency is up, a blind man is better at playing games than I am, and we talk our gaming New Year's resolutions. All right, we're gonna kick things off with some quick headlines from overnight. Gary's Mod celebrated 10 million sales over the weekend. I assume that's cumulative, and 10 million people didn't buy the game over the weekend. The game tool thing released as a standalone physics game in 2006, so congrats to Gary. Next up, and it looks like Rise of the Tomb Raider is coming to PC this month. Details on the PC release have been intentionally sketchy thanks to the Xbox timed exclusivity deal, but if the listing on the game's Steam page is to be believed, the gambit is up. Moving on, and AMD unveiled their new GPU architecture, Polaris. With Polaris, AMD are moving from 28 nanometer tech to 14 nanometer FinFET GPUs which will mean a lot to some people. Or, if you're like me, it will mean nothing. The gist is they should be able to get the same power out of their GPUs, but with much higher energy efficiency. Still boring. And finally, it's being reported that there will not be a new Assassin's Creed game this year. A rumor only slightly hampered by the fact that Assassin's Creed Chronicles India comes out in two weeks time. But assuming they're talking about the main tentpole titles, the series, which has traditionally released a game every year since 2009, will continue in 2017 and will apparently be set in Egypt. Now joining me is X to talk about some of the biggest stories of the day. It says your name is X here. Oh, so I'm just a fill in. It's Goose. Hey. Uh, let's start with a quick update about yesterday's MLG news. All right. Activision Blizzard has officially announced that it has acquired Major League Gaming. CEO Robert Kotick said that the goal is to create the ESPN of esports. MLG will be keeping its name and will continue to run MLG TV, as well as their touring pro circuit. In addition, the deal doesn't mean they will only promote and host Activision games. That's nice. That is nice. They're still staying under the banner of MLG, so... Yeah, so, I mean, really, you think about this more of, like, a bailout than necessarily, like, a sort of hostile takeover. Yeah, and we're seeing it as kind of, like, they're keeping the heritage. They're gonna... They're not gonna scare people away with this new branded kind yeah. of, like, Activision Online gaming eSports channel or something like that. Yeah, it's... and even though I got into watching eSports relatively late compared to since it started, it is kind of the granddaddy yeah. of that scene, so it would be sad to see it go away in the same way that the newspaper barely exists mm. anymore. So but Activision, if you want to buy newspaper, I hear it's up for sale. Moving on, and the Oculus Rift is up for pre-order on the 6th of January in the United States. Here in Australia, you'll be able to place your order on the Oculus website around 3 a.m. on Thursday morning. The device will come with three copies of Eve, Valkyrie, and the platformer Lucky's Tale. Here's the thing though, they have not announced a price. Ah, okay. So this could be... And to me, it's like... Because the price will scare you. In, yeah. And not in the way that VR wants to scare you, which is kind of like, <laughs> boom, and it's over here. But, like, I, I swear this thing is going to cost about a thousand Australian it's gonna dollars. Be that a, is my prediction. It's going to be a bomb. I'm also just losing... It's going to be a bomb. No, it's the price. It's going to oh, be... Oh, right. No. Oh, like they're gonna drop a bomb. Yes. A price bomb. A price bomb. Yeah. But I'm, I'm losing interest in VR, and I'm like one of the biggest advocates for it. I love it, I can't wait for it. But it's like, we were pre-ordering for the beta ones, for yeah. the, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, the dev, the kits. dev kits. And then they're like, then they're a dev kit too. And it's like, okay, it's still not here. And now we're pre-ordering for it, and we don't even know when that's coming out, really. Yeah. And it's like, by that this time it comes out, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, whatever, I'm over it. 2014 was the year of VR. Yes. And then 2015 was the year of VR. And now we're heading into 2016. We still don't have any VR. No. This may be officially the first year of VR. I did a story last year on VR, and I think it was introduced by saying, next year will be the year of VR. Yeah, and I'm right. like, it's just, it's just a constant, it's just out of reach. I and think so... it's just, it's, I, I, I want to believe, and I think that it's really cool. I just, I feel like, like, at $1,000, is that something... I, I, it's not $1,000, I think it could be $1,000. Yes, like we're guessing here. Okay, let me rephrase. What kind of price point would you go, yeah, I'll jump in, like, what? and try it? I think I would probably want to pay no more than, say, $400. Oh, you're so cheap. It's I know, but, but right now you've got, like, uh, you've got Google Cardboard. I know they're not the same, but you've got... <laughs> no, 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 we've got little... <laughs> Google are thrilled at that comparison. <laughs> so, so we pretty much developed no technology yeah. except for, like, a frame. Yeah, yeah. 
but it, it's still quite effective. And I just think people are going to look for the slightly cheaper option because it's such a unknown area to experiment in. You're not going to fork out a thousand dollars for something that's going to make you throw up the next time you put it on. So. Yeah, true. And I would say, out of all the VR devices coming out, the one that I would put my money on would be the PlayStation. Yes. Because it has a giant install base already. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything else to run it. You just plug it into the existing console that you have. Yeah. And I imagine it will actually be the cheapest one of the sort of top tier ones because it doesn't need, like, it, it's not as powerful as the others, but I think that ease of use and price will probably tip that in. And I mean, it's exciting that it's from Sony, who are obviously going to try and integrate it as best they can yep. with everything to do with the PlayStation. But we saw that with Kinect and Microsoft. Like, this was this new technology yeah. that was going to be supported by Microsoft. And it's just gone down the gurgler. And it's, you're thinking... So, I, I totally hear that. I, and I'm not the biggest advocate for VR. I do think it... It, I do think it is cool. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether or not I want it to be how I play games all the time. No. But I think that the difference between Kinect and, v and VR is that Kinect was like a peripheral that didn't really change the way you play things. It was just a different input. Yeah. Like it was, it was kind of like wave your hands around and that's how you'll control something. Whereas VR is an immersion thing. So mm. it's actually like you can still play with a controller but now you're in the world. And I think that is more appealing to gamers yeah. than like I'm riding a raft and doing this. I still think the Oculus is sitting on this interesting position because it is it was the first one announced. Yeah. And so it was the one that got us all excited about VR. Mm -hmm. But it's been taking so long. It's almost to compare it to something like, I don't know, DayZ, which was this game that came out which got us so excited about this new genre. Yeah, yeah, that's a survival like, game. Thing. Yeah, we're like, this is going to be the future. And we just keep waiting for it to come out. We'll keep waiting for it to be perfect. Yeah. And it took so long that by the time it got anywhere near to being finished, everyone had just wiped their hands of it. And I'm just, I'm worried that this is going to happen with VR and with someone like Oculus just stretching it out over so much time. Yeah. The, the year of VR, the century of VR. All right, we've now reached the long running, most successful part of the show. It's Thing of the Day. Is it like a jingle for that or something? Ba, 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 da, ba. Thing of the day. Okay, let me explain about the titles. So uh, <laughs> we need titles for this show, uh, for this segment. And uh, we went, okay, we'll make these. John made the thing that you just saw. <laughs> uh, what I'm suggesting is that I'm putting it out to you guys to come up with a better opening title segment for this uh, section of the show. So you have one week from today, so that's next Tuesday, uh, to send in something for that segment. Otherwise, I'm just gonna make Gusto. If you can outdo what John did, good luck to you, but I'm pretty impressed with that. I'm very impressed. I okay, like our thing of the day is, after five years of dedication, Terry Garrett, a blind gamer, has finished a playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Terry lost his sight at the age of 10, and since then he has had to rely on sound rather than visuals to make his way through games. He started a playthrough of the infamously challenging Ocarina of Time and its stupid water temple back in 2011, and has finally triumphed over Ganon, capturing it all. There. And to the head. And Ganondorf is dead. Well done, Terry. How do you even do that? Yeah, but it's got good sounds, that game. It does. So I would I would want to listen to those sounds just over and over. Congratulations, Terry. You're our... Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Thing of the day. It's catchy. All right, that nearly brings us to the end of the show, but to round us out, thank you to everyone who suggested discussion topics for today. We thought at the beginning of the year we would keep it light, as a couple of you wanted to know, including The Simo, Meow Indeed, and Abu Zar Nur, what our New Year's gaming resolutions are. Ooh, uh, guess first. Um, okay, I would say I'm going to be less picky. And by that I mean I'm not going to pick games which I'm only going to finish. Because I think that's oh, yeah? something you and I share, yep. that we're pretty, uh, you know, selective, and yeah. I'm not going to spend half an hour playing a game and then put it away. I'm going to start doing that this okay, year. Okay, cool. I'm going to play the start of a few games, and if I don't like it, I'm just going to be happy that I played some of it, and then I'm going to put it on the pile. Because last year I watched a lot of Pocket, and I got to vicariously watch you play those games, but I'm going to play some of them this year as well. Brilliant. Well, mine is almost the polar opposite of that, <laughs> in that I am going to stress less about the fact that there are just games that I don't want to play. Uh, so, there are games like... Fallout, like lots of shooters, like lots of the bigger, big yep. games. It's not that I don't 
think they're good. It's just that I know that from the way that I play games, they're not necessarily the kind of things that I want. Yeah. And it's time that I don't feel crap about that. So we're basically switching up entirely. Yeah. And we can t we can check at the end of the year yeah. how that fared and how who, we failed. Who's aged worse? Yeah. Who look? Yeah. And who played more games? Who enjoyed more games? And uh, we can try again next year. Brilliant. All right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. Thank you to everyone who suggested topics for discussion. What are your New Year's gaming resolutions? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, what should we discuss tomorrow? Now to keep on top of everything good game, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. Follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nickboy, at Piereth, and at GG Edit Monkey. He's at Goose Mangus. There are links to everything I just said below in the description. Nickboy, Goose out.